In this video, I want to show you a cool data structure called an oct tree. This data structure is very useful for fast and efficient querying of objects in 3D space. So for example, let's say you had 5,000 trees in your game and you wanted to figure out what trees were within, let's say, 200 studs of the player. Normally, you'd probably think of just having some kind of for loop that would go through all the trees in the game, check the distance between the player and the tree, and continue looping. While this linear process works fine for a limited number of objects, once you start getting into the thousands like I have right here, you're going to want to have a more efficient way of figuring out what trees or whatever objects are closest to the player. And this is where oct trees come into play. Now an oct tree is where we spatially divide our game into different cubes and these cubes are connected together through a tree data structure so one cube is a node and then that node or that cube can have other children or different cubes inside of it so you can basically think of like if you look in the explorer window we have a folder and let's say that folder is a node and it has children inside of it and maybe those children have children of their own so you can basically think of this the exact same way as the hierarchy of data stored in the explorer window so you can think of an oct tree as like some kind of giant cube in your game i'll just make a let's just make this a four stud by four stud by four stud cube and then you would divide this cube into eight different nodes that would be basically smaller cubes inside of it so let me just duplicate this cube and then I could make a smaller two by two cube. So this would be one cube and then you would do another and another and you would have a total of eight cubes inside of this cube. And then maybe those cubes that are inside of this cube would have another eight children or nodes inside of them. And that's where the name oct tree comes from because it's divided into eight cubes per each cube. And this is pretty useful because for example, let's say uh, you had some kind of object over here in this corner of the cube. And let's say your player was over here in this particular cube. Now let's say with these objects, let's say there's one here, another one over there. Let's just say they're all scattered around within this cube. And you wanna figure out what objects are closest to the player. Now, obviously if an object is super far away over, let's say in this corner, then you don't wanna do a distance check. That's kind of useless. However, if we know that the player is within this cube over here, then maybe all we need to do is just check for all of the objects that are within this cube. And that would cut your computation time basically in one eighth because you're only checking this one area rather than all of these other areas where objects might be. So to demonstrate the performance benefit of using octrees, I have this game with thousands of white parts and I want to check what parts are within, let's say 160 studs of the player. So let's go ahead and make a new local script. And I'm going to require a module that I have called Octree. This is a module made by another developer named Quenty. If you wanna grab this module or learn more about the API and such, there will be a link to the documentation of this module in the description below. But let's go ahead and define a constant. I'm gonna call this my max distance and we wanna do 160 studs search around the player. Now all of my parts I have here are tagged with this example part tag so I can quickly collect all of them. So I'm also going to need the collection service real quick. So let me just grab that. And now what I want to do is I want to go through every single part inside of the collection service, get tagged, and it's going to be our example part. And basically what we want to do is we want to insert this particular part at whatever position it's at inside of our oct tree. So we need to make a new oct tree and that's easy to do. I'll just make a new variable called grid and it's going to be equal to my oct tree. And we're going to use the dot new constructor to create a new oct tree 3D grid. And now for every single part that is in my game with this particular tag, we're going to add it to the grid. And there's a function inside of this grid and that function is called create node. So remember earlier I talked about nodes. We're going to create a new node and this position of this particular object, uh, we're going to pass part dot position. And then we're going to pass the object itself, which is just the part. And we'll do that for every single part in the game. And now that we have all of these parts stored in the node, the next thing we can go ahead and do is create a function. Let's have this function get a, uh, let's have it get a list of nearby parts. And we're going to do this linearly. So this is just going to be a standard for loop. And then we'll have another function get a list of nearby parts. But we're going to have this use the oct tree instead. And we're going to check to see what the performance difference is. For the linear search, this would be really easy. We'll just have some kind of result table. 
And then let's get a reference to the character's root part. So that's going to be a uh, game, get service, players. We'll grab the local player, get the player's character, and then we'll grab their humanoid. And their humanoid has a reference to the root part. And then once we have the root part of the player, we can just loop through every single part in the collection service, get tagged, example part, and we would just do our normal distance check. So we could have a variable, we'll call it distance. That's going to be equal to my root parts position. And we'll subtract this by the position of wherever our part is. And we'll just get the magnitude of that vector. So we have the distance. And then we can check to see if this distance is less than or equal to our max distance. And if it is, we'll just insert it inside of our result table. And then finally, once we're done looping through all of those parts, we can just go ahead and return the result table. Now with our get list of nearby parts using the oct tree, this is going to be much simpler. We also need to grab the humanoid root part. We'll just put that there. But now we can refer to our grid and our grid has a function inside of it called radius search, where we pass it the position and the radius uh, around that position we would like to search. So that's going to be our root parts position and the radius is going to be our max distance. And then we could just return that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to yield for, I don't know, five seconds. So that way I give some time for my uh, character to load in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to first get a list of the nearby parts using the linear search. And we're going to check to see how long it takes for this to calculate or go through all the execution by first getting the current time or the current tick. And then we execute the code and then we'll get the uh, end time. So we'll call this uh, end tick or end time. Actually, you know what, we'll just print um, total execution time. And that's going to be equal to the current tick minus the starting tick. And this is going to be for the linear search. And then afterwards, let's go ahead and do the same thing again. We'll set the start equal to the current tick. And now let's go ahead and get a list of nearby parts using the oct tree. And then we'll just print this exact same thing here as well. So that way we can get the total amount of execution time. And then to make it obvious that we actually got a collection or a list of the nearby parts, we'll have another function to uh, convert the color of those parts to like green for a split second. So I'll call this change part color. We'll get past uh, some kind of array of parts and we'll go through every single part inside of parts. And let's just change the brick color to uh, let's just do brick color dot green. I don't know. We'll do something like that. And then we'll just delay a function for like, uh, let's say we delay it for 0.1 seconds. And then we'll just set the brick color back to white. And then we'll just wait two seconds between each of these. So that way we flash it to green and then 0.5 seconds later, we'll flash it back to white. And then we'll wait two seconds and then we'll go do the octree method. That way I'm not including that delay time within the calculation for the total execution time. So we'll go and play test the game. And we're going to wait a few seconds to get our first result. So there we go. It showed all the parts that were green and then it did it again. So let's go ahead and take a look at the total execution time. So doing the linear search, it took 0.032 seconds, but using the octree, it took 0.002 seconds. And if we punch both of those values into a percentage increase calculator, what you're going to see is that using the linear search method, it was 1000 203% slower than using just a regular oct tree. And that's pretty crazy. So oct trees are much more performant. And if you're going to do spatial queries and distance checks with thousands of objects in your game, it really makes sense to just use an oct tree instead of the standard linear search method. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you want to learn more about oct trees or quad trees, which are used for 2D games, I recommend checking out a video in the description below. And there's also going to be a link to Quinty's oct tree module that you can use in your games. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.